Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. We've made it through the week. We're about to wrap up, and let's see what happens next week. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you get the alerts, the updates, all that fun jazz. Uh, and we are going to do what we do each and every day. We're going to take a look at our four major markets and then our stock of the day. But real quick announcement. We had our Traders Summit yesterday. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to catch a recording of that Trader Summit, go to TradersArmy.com and sign up for a free membership, and you can watch it in the, uh, in, in the free trading videos section. Also, this week, big announcement, it's a free preview week at Traders Army. So we hope you will join us on Sunday night for our live trade room. This is open for everybody. All you have to do is have a free membership at TradersArmy.com, and you're going to get access to all of our live trade rooms. You're going to get access to our on-demand content, our traders worksheet, all the different things that we do. So go to tradersarmy.com today, sign up for a free membership, enjoy the week, see if it's something that you might want to do long term. All right, let's go ahead and dive in to the markets today. And we're going to start, as always, with the big picture. So looking at the big picture today, we've got our S&P, NASDAQ, crude oil, and gold. And really, the story is in bond yields. The story is in bond yields, and that's what a lot of people have been talking about. Yesterday, um, there was the talk from the Fed was that they're not going to ease the buying of bonds, and, and there's no reason to micromanage in the short term, which I actually agree with. Let the market see if it can correct itself. Don't, we don't need to jump in every time the market gives us a little pullback. And when we look at the market's pullback and what's happened over the past few weeks, uh, overall, from the high, if I look at a daily chart, Overall, from the high, the market has pulled back from 39.50 to uh, around 37.08. We're down about 6%. That's not enough for the Fed to need to intervene. And this, this fear that the Fed needs to intervene every time we get a 6 or 8 or 10% pullback, it, it's, just, it, it's just overly manipulating our markets, is, is, is my, my, my belief. And so let the market try to correct itself, utilizing true dynamics of supply and demand. And, and that's really what I'm still playing off of, is that my long-term bullish picture hasn't changed. Uh, it doesn't really change until I get below this 3,700 by 3,600 kind of area. Because on my daily chart, I've still not put in a lower swing low, right? I mean, we've got a bit of a pullback, but nothing has really changed my overall direction. So what do I see for today for trading opportunities? Well, yesterday on those, uh, those, those statements from the Fed, we saw the really strong sell-off. Um, and that hasn't really carried over overnight. We got a rally up at the end of the day, and we've basically been flat ever since. And so what are we looking at going into a Friday? We'll know that we're going into a Friday, and anytime you go into a Friday, you've got weekend gap risk in play. But as I look at this, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting, let me pull this back to the daily and go to the actual SPX. Um, we did get below a key moving average. Uh, pull up my three moving averages. There it is, MACD, three moving averages. So we did close below the 50-period moving average. This is the first time we've closed below the 50-period moving average in quite a while. Um, but the last time we did, we wound up getting right back above it fairly quickly. Um, same thing with this one in here. When I look at this on more on a weekly scale, I tend to look at the 20-week moving average as a much better tell. The 20-week moving average is typically a much better tell for me um, when I'm looking at big-picture market movements. Matter of fact, I will oftentimes utilize a blend of the 8 and the 20, um, using the 20-week moving average as a, as, a, as a stepping out point and the 8-period exponential moving average as a get-back-in point. And we're not there yet, right? We're not, we're not quite there yet. And, and once again, we all know that moving averages will always be lagging, but they are at least good temperature indicators. And so how do we trade it for today? Well, overall today, I just don't see that there's a whole lot of great short-term opportunities for me to jump in front of a speeding train. You know, when I go to a five-minute chart, I do see, or excuse me, 15-minute chart, not a five-minute. When I go to a 15-minute chart, I do see a potential for a breakout above here, provided that we get some basing. Now, that's counter trend, because our trend is on the four-hour chart. Our four-hour trend is definitely down. So that's a counter trend to go long above that level. But if we get quality basing, I'm okay with it, because we've got a little bit of a wick over wick level, one strong touch move away, hit it a, a second time, and we're, and we're getting rising highs coming into that level. So I think that's a, that's a very real possibility for a short-term day trade today. 
um, with your targets probably being somewhere up around 3,800. So I wouldn't try for a 50, 60 point rally, but if we get to 3,800, that's going to be a really nice, strong day if you're trading in the S&P. Um, in the NASDAQ, we see a very similar picture. Now, the NASDAQ pullback has been a little bit more severe than the S&P. The NASDAQ pullback we're seeing is about 11.75%. So a deeper pullback, about twice as bad in the NASDAQ than it has been in the S&P uh, overall from, you know, from, the, from the highs. But daily chart has actually given me a lower swing low in the NASDAQ where it has not done so in the S&P. So a little bit more bearish overall in this market. Than, than in the uh, than in the S and P. When I look at this on the fifteen minute chart to see does this have the same breakout setup, it does not, right? Whereas the S and P is sitting at a decent breakout point, then the Nasdaq's just not quite there yet because of this this top right in there. So we'd have to look a bit higher in the Nasdaq. Matter of fact, the Nasdaq, if we get to our target in the S and P, might give us an opportunity to go short somewhere up in this twelve six region. All right, so keep an eye on this 12,600 12, region as a place where we may consider a potential short. Uh, in the Russell, um, we, are, we broke down below our breakout line here in the Russell the other day. And so now when I look at the Russell, I think it could be rolling over again um, for price to continue to fall. Once again, the Russell also typically, or Russell had been a leader um, and it has fallen down, although not as bad as the, as the NASDAQ either. Um, and it's as it's down 10.08%. So really from the high, the, the, the NASDAQ's the worst um, overall from those markets. So looking at our big four, our crude oil markets. Now we talked about crude oil yesterday, or, or uh, excuse me, on Wednesday, about the fact that I anticipated that we might get a short-term pullback into 60 and then boom, rally back up to 70. And shocker, that's exactly what we're doing right now. Now I will say that we had some confirmation supply areas um, one that may have given you an entry for a small two to one reward to risk right through here on the 15 minute. The other one didn't give you an entry at all on yesterday's movement. And so as we continue to trade higher, I would say that your best level has already been touched right here with this red candle right in there. So the level is still technically valid uh, because it has not been broken. And I'm going to remove this one here up above us. Level still technically valid because it's not been broken, but in reality, I think you're better off utilizing this line of support and getting long somewhere back along this area of support. I think that's where your better opportunity to get long is going to be on a pullback into 64. Unless we get basing, if we get basing somewhere at a level, um, with, then I think you could have a breakout to the upside if we get quality basing. And then last is gold. Gold continues to fall. And we had, a, uh, we had a short trade in gold here on Wednesday, which worked out really well. The long popped up out of this level back into the short, and we just were bouncing between those two areas. And then all of a sudden, yesterday, we continued the move down as gold is continuing its bearish momentum. So um, what we've seen has followed through, um, and the next short would be a breakdown below this area here. That would be kind of probably the next best short opportunity based upon the movement that we've seen. So big picture wise, you know, the S&P, the NASDAQ and gold are all bearish. Crude oil is a bit more bullish. We do have non-farm payrolls today out at 8.30 Eastern. So keep an eye on what, what the market does around non-farm payrolls. Remember, we don't want to take breakout trades on announcements, but we will pay attention to knowing that that announcement is coming. So let's go ahead and change, transition here and change gears and let's talk about our stock of the day. So our stock of the news today is going to be Costco. We're going to talk a little bit about Costco. Costco, you know, the place where you go and buy a 50-gallon jug of ice cream because who doesn't need a 50-gallon jug of ice cream, uh, really, really had a big move up during the pandemic as we saw the stock price go from 266 to 388. But in the last few weeks, we have really seen Costco take a dip. And, uh, and it was really, it was really um, you know, yesterday's earnings kind of sealed the deal as to why. And they reported worse than expected earnings, and they're and they're saying that that was because of their wage hikes. That they did a a, a COVID and basically a, 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 as a response to COVID, they did a wage hike, and so it caused them to 
to make less than they expected to and what they projected. And so when looking at Costco and an opportunity to join this trend coming back down, I don't think it makes sense to try to chase this trend. When I look at this, my eye immediately goes to this area up here. If we rally back up into that 350 region, that to me is a really good, strong entry. The other area that looks pretty strong is this area right here, um, which is 331 by 335. Now, both of which make pretty good potential entries. So what I would say when looking at Costco is that if I'm looking to, to trade it down, I think that you've got an eventual target somewhere down in this range here at 300. So with price rallying back up into here, I will look for a reversal candlestick pattern. In this area, if in this area we get a reversal candlestick pattern, that's going to give me a potential entry. And that potential entry uh, in this reversal candlestick pattern would be enough to tell me that it's that it's that it's worth getting in. Um, and so that would be the number that I would look for. And and I would look for that area as a potential reversal. Now, if we don't get a reversal candlestick pattern here and price blows right through that level, I would just take a straight short at that 350 level. I think that's a good one, but your stop has to go there above 358. So give yourself a little bit of room in that position. That allows you to rejoin the big picture trend on a you know, you, you, you would join the impulsive move down on a corrective move back up uh, in a stock that has earnings that were a little bit disappointing. Now, could be the fact that, that the market already knew those earnings were going to be a bit disappointing. We may see a rally over the next couple of days, and that's what drives us back into this level. So keep an eye on that one for today. So I hope that's a, that, uh, that makes sense for you today. If you guys have any questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I hope you'll join us on Sunday night for our free preview week. Uh, as uh, in our live trade rooms, it's the first hour is futures. The second hour is options. It's going to be a great session. Uh, and then we've got trading rooms six days a week. So next week in our free preview week, you get a chance to join us and come on board. So I will talk to you soon. I hope you guys have a great day. See hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.